Ah. I've made this mistake before, so don't do that. Is there's a little lock, and so if you bring this down, it locks the card. So it locks it so you can't delete anything from the card. You don't lose any photos on, on your vacation to Hawaii or anything like that. But you also can't write any photos to the card. So if you take pictures, the camera might not notify you that it can't write to it until the, the buffer on the camera runs out. And then it just won't work. Although modern cameras generally will give you a little notification. And they also have a much bigger buffer. So, But just make sure that you have this on the little thing that doesn't have the lock on it. And don't, like, ah, don't make those mistakes. Not all DSLR or mirrorless cameras or things like that that are older will support XC cards. So check to see if you need an HC or an XC card. What SD card is right for you? You have two primary different types of SD cards, HC and XC cards. The big difference between HC and XC cards is that HC cards have a maximum of 32 gigabytes of storage where XC cards can go all the way up to two terabytes on a little tiny SD card. But XC cards are the standard. So unless you you have something really old go with an xc card even most old things are compatible with xc cards pro tip make sure that if you have an sd card for a while you start wearing down the sd card so it won't have the same capacity as when it first came out that's years down the line but this one was the original one that came with my sister's camera so this one's really old make sure to check it see how many write cycles are left for it or how much capacity it is because even though this isn't 16 gig card it only holds four gigs of photos so you don't want to go out and have a issue where your SD card fails or something like that, or even worse, it just when goes kaput on you. You're like, ah! You have the one with the U underneath it, which represents 10 megabytes per second read, which if you're shooting really big JPEGs, it's going to take a while to write to the cards, because if you get a really old or inexpensive thing that needs an SD card, it's probably going to have one of these is really slow. When you're taking photos, and that's assuming that the camera is writing at its full capacity, so it's not thermal throttling or anything like that, because a lot of cameras will write better if they're in the thermal optimal range so then they're not overheating and they're not too cold to save the photo if i'm shooting a raw photo where this is 120 megabytes per second this one's what i would probably say is if you're looking for the least expensive card is get something like this sand disc card i've never had an issue with sand disc cards so you can get other cards and i'll have all my recommendations and all of the fiddly things we talked about in the video description amazon has been running regular sales on these so then you can get a really good deal on them so you're going somewhere and you need to make sure that with a whole bunch of other people that have SD cards, the nice thing about SanDisk cards is they put a little space so you can write your name on it. Or if you're doing a shoot for a client that you can write the date on it of it or something like that. Or if you're shooting like a Christmas, these are SanDisk Extreme cards. These are 170 megabytes per second or this one's 120. So it's way faster than the really old one is. But the difference between a budget SD card and Pro has all the functions of this one, but the these are way faster. If you also do raw images with your camera, so if you're gonna take photos or really big megapixel JPEG and raw. Benefit of raw photos is even though the, it might look a little not as nice in the camera, but you get a lot more flexibility editing in post. So to make it amazing in it, tweak it just the way you want. Raw doesn't discard all of the metadata, little bits of information that aren't really necessary, but raw takes up a lot more space, way faster. I'm currently using a Pentax camera but Leica makes good cameras too and so does Canon and Sony and so it doesn't really matter what camera you're choosing in regards to SD card as long as it can fit in a standard SD card although one thing not all UHS-1 cards will fit in a UHS-3 card reader or your camera because they generally have chamfered edges that are tilted down where these are flat. My favorite budget card reader, I'll have linked in the video description, allows you to get the full speed out of it, USB-A and USB-C one because USB-C all the things. But leave your questions and comments down below and like and share because it really is helpful. If you found that entertaining or helpful, watch this next.